before we start, uh, I just want to let you know that um, I was at home, and I realized that uh, the Holy Spirit is in me, and Jesus lifted me. And, and I was thinking, why, why, why do I need to go to church? If I have Jesus in me and the Holy Spirit lifted in me, why come here? You know? And, uh, and then I forgot that I have to preach. So that's why I'm kidding. I'm just kidding. <laughs> you know, no, no, that's not the reason. But I, I just saying this that um, to make us aware why we're here. Because the Prince of God lives in you guys, okay? You can stay at home and the Prince of God stay, stay in us. But you know what we don't have where we are in our houses? We don't have each other. I, I can, Pam is no God, can, Pam cannot be in the same time all the time. You know, that's why sometimes we use these times so that we can see the body of Christ. And that's one of the reasons that we are here together. Not because we come here to find God. No, because God is, yeah, he's here, but it's, it's where we are too. But we, the people who are not where we are is all of us. And we need to value that. We need to learn to start valuing that. So for, to start doing this, I want to encourage you guys to stand up. Everybody stand up. And you're going to find someone to pray for it. And we're going to agree on this, that the Holy Spirit touches today. Okay? Uh, if that person has a need, take the time and say, okay, I want you to pray for me for this. And we pray for each other. Let's take this time now. And value this time that we're here together. So find someone that you probably you don't know much. And say, say hello, my name is so-and-so. I'm, I'm your brother, I'm your sister. You don't know me, but uh, this is who I am. And let's, let's, let's try to do this. Okay? And we're going to pray for someone, for one another. It's, it's okay if we do circles of three or four or five. It's okay. All right, family, we're going to start wrapping up again. We're going to have a few seconds more to pray for one another. And
Okay, guys. All right, we're going to sit now. And I want to invite Isaiah. Come over here. Come over here, Papa. All right. Okay, before we start, as before three people before the service, two who's gonna help me. And I'm gonna put this on my son. Put it on. Can you hear me well? Can you hear me well? Can you see something? No? Okay. Okay. Okay, you stay here, okay? This is your mom. No, it's Sarah. <laughs> oh, okay. Are you sure? Yeah. All right, dear. This is your mom. No. <laughs> You're like, um. Hi, Isaiah. Hi, Isaiah. This is your mom. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Would you? I, how do you do that, man? I can't tell you. How do you do that? Because I know my mom's voice. You know your mom's voice? How do you know your mom's voice? Tell me about it. Because she's my mom. Because she's your mom? Yeah? yeah. Okay. You can listen to that. Thank you. Thank you. I just want to uh, bring this uh, small illustration with you guys because um, one of the reasons that I say I can um, recognize Mama's voice is because Mama spent a lot of time with Isaiah. A lot of time. She wake her, wake him up. She put him to bed. Sometimes, and I for sure he will recognize my voice too because we share that responsibility together. But uh, I say spend a lot of time with us. We go camping together. We correct him. Uh, sometimes he get mad with us. Sometimes, many times we get mad with them. And he's so used to hear a voice and recognize that, recognize them. And that create a, a relationship that means that we are in a relationship with him because he can, even though that he heard different voices, when he heard mama's voice, he said, uh-uh, that's mama, that's mama, that's mama. And, and for me, uh, that's beautiful, that's beautiful. And I want to apply that, um, the importance or learn how to listen. And we're in this series of divine desires, falling in love with God's design for sex and money. And I want to talk, I want to emphasize today the importance of listening. When in the rolling to be a good administrator of what God gave us. That's going to be my main focus. And I want you guys to um, open your Bibles in Genesis. Chapter 1, verse 26 to 27. We're going to read the Bible today. It's going to be really relaxed. We're going to let the Holy Spirit to talk through their Bible, through his word. And probably you're going to hear different things that um, I'm going to say probably in your devotional through this. You're going to feel something that God is, is speaking to you, and that's completely okay. Okay? When I, when I was start reading this, all the things that you see in red was things that, you know, pop in my mind that just mean something for me, you know? 
Okay, before this, they start reading this. God was, in this story, the reality, the narrative of how he created the world. He created heavens and earth, and he, he separated the heavens from, from the earth. He created the lights, he created everything. And in the sixth day is where we're going to jump in. And he said this. Then God said. Then God said. We're going to see in Genesis chapter 1 this part a lot. Because when God said something, something happened. And he said this and when he was creating the man. Then God said, let us make man, uh, mankind in our image. In our likeness. So they, so that they may rule. I want to repeat that, this. So that they may rule over the fish in the sea and the birds of the sky, over the livestock and all the wild animals and over all creatures that moves along the ground. So God created mankind on his own image. An image of God, he created them. Male and female, he created them. Chapter, verse 28. God blessed them and said to them, Be, oh man, God blessed them and he said to them, oh, I love that. Be fruitful, increase in number, fill the earth and subdue it. Rule over the fish in the sea and the birds in the sky and over every living creature that moves on the ground. Then God said, I give you every seed bearing plant on the face of the whole earth and every tree that was fruit with seed in, in it. They will be for your food. Then we're going to jump into chapter 2 of Genesis. And in chapter 2 of Genesis, they gave us a really summary of the creation. A really quick snap of how it's kind of repeating Genesis 1 but in chapter 2, but it's a really shorter version. And in verse 7, talking about the man. Then the Lord God formed a man from the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. And the man become a living being. Now we're going to read 15 to 17. The Lord God took the man and put him in the garden of Eden to work it and to take care of it. And the Lord God commanded the man, you are free to eat from any tree in the garden, but you must not eat from the tree of knowledge of good and evil. For when you eat from it, you will certainly die. I'm going to stop there. And when I read this Bible verse, I notice that human beings are, we're different for the rest of the creation. We're the only uh, beings in the creation that God said, I want them to look like me. He didn't say that when he was creating a doggy or a cat or a bird. No, he said that about human beings. I'm going to create it according to my image that he may rule. So he created us to see his image so that we may rule over this amazing playground called earth. And he, and I love in chapter 2 how he, he grabbed mankind and, uh, and he, he put the picture that he grabbed dust and he put it in his hands 
and he forms a man. That he took time to design us, to design mankind. And he just grabbed that piece of dust, I create, I create um, a, a, a man, and then, and a woman, and then he just do this, like, and then something happened. And that little piece of clay, I, don't, I think this was, looks like a piece of clay, that's what the image come to my mind, immediately just become an, an a life being. And that life being was created to rule, to administrate. And I was thinking, because this was all before the mankind falls. All those kind of skills that we as a human, we still discovering until today through science or how our, our body works and how things happen in the world. All that knowledge to administrate all this world, I probably I'm saying that heresy, probably not, but I, sometimes I feel that the humankind at the beginning, with wasn't no, no sin in us, when we're super connected with God, we can understand everything. And definitely to rule, you have to understand what you're doing. Otherwise, you're going to be a mess if you don't understand what you're doing. And God created them to his image, to rule, to administrate. And I said, he created and I said, you know, go play, have fun. Put names into all animals. And he saw a lion and he said, that looks like a lion. So I'm going to call him Lion. And he called him Lion. Man, this looks like a cat. I'm going to call him Cat and he become Cat. It's a naming of, can you imagine all the creativity that the first person that God created have to have to put names in all animals that just blow my mind. All come with all these kind of names and, and all that. And, and he was doing that. And I see the importance of listening here in this part, in this part of the Bible. That God, the first thing that he wanted for the human beings was to rule. To rule. God wants us to rule. You know what? God has the blueprints of this amazing playground. You know how everything works. And for sure, if we continue reading um, um, Genesis, you, you're going to see that was a dynamic because um, I don't want to go so far from my sermon, but uh, after the fall, he, they heard gas moving and they recognized that what's was coming. They, they, it was a relationship, a deep relationship with God and human beings. He understand that. And you know what? That always surprised me. The importance to understand the value, to understand and listening what God wants us for your life and for my life. Because God wants to talk to us like he talked to Adam and Eve and he said, I'm going to bless them, be fruitful. He wants to do that right now with us. Um, I remember one day um, that really shocked my, 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 my relationship with God. Um, I was doing Uber and Lyft. I, was, I picked up a, a client from Hobby. I was bringing it to Sugarland. And we started, we engaged in a conversation with this guy. And he was a Christian. He was a believer. So we started sharing about Jesus. And I, was told, and I told him, hey, man, tell me your story about Jesus. How how you become a Christian? And he said, Tito, I struggled with pornography for years. For years. There was a bad habit that I had that almost caused to destroy my, my, my house. I tried to live, live that, and I couldn't live this bad habit of of the porno being engaged in pornography, and uh, and one day um, I understood who I really meant for Jesus. And when I understood what I really meant for Jesus, that big 
world that I, I was in my life about, you know, pornography and everything, just fall down. And since that day, he was apparently many years, many years ago, uh, I, I got free from that. And I started a relationship with Jesus Christ. And my life was transformed. And he was telling me all that. And I was like, man, that's cool. And tell me your story. And I said, man, you said, come from a Christian home. And, you know, and God used me here doing Uber and Lyft and everything. But we get to the destination. And I just feel compelled. Said, man, we need to pray for one another. You love Jesus. I love Jesus. You're my brother. I don't know where church you're going to, but you're my brother. We're brothers. We need to pray for one another. And he said, you know, that's a, a good idea. So, we pray for one another in my car. Then I went out of the car, we finished praying, and went out of my car. I was uh, up, in, up in the back part of my car to grab his luggage. Grab his luggage. And he said, one moment. God told me that I have to give you everything that I have in my pocket to you. And I was like, what? What? I was like, I, I was kind of confused. Okay, what? What are you saying? Yeah, God told me that I have to give you everything that I have in my pockets to you. And I said, bring it in. <laughs> no, no, I, I, was, I was in shock. I was in shock. He said, no, no, sir, you don't have to do that. No, don't, don't do that. Just please. And he said, no, I have to do that. So he opened his wallet. He got all his bills. He went to his pocket, coins and everything. He went to his, pa- to, to his backpack. There was a few coins there. And he gave me everything that he has in, in, with, him, with him. It was around like $600 that he gave it to me. And I was so shocked. I didn't grab the money. I didn't count it at the moment. And just he told me, man, God told me to dig, do this to you. Okay, take it. And I start crying. I remember that I, I, I leaned in my car. And that gesture that he did, it was so touching for me. And I just started just crying, crying. And he came and called me. He said, man, you don't have to do this. He said, no, man, this God told me to do it. And, yeah, well, we say bye to one another. We exchange numbers. Um, we keep in touch for, for a while. And then when I get into my car and I count the money, it was around $600. The money that, I don't know for what, what was the need that I had in that time was almost exactly a amount of money that I need for the, the situation that I was living. And I called my wife immediately. She was at school and she answered me. And she said, hey, Stacy, you know, guess what happened? I said, what happened? A customer just gave me $600. I said, what? Yeah, he said that God spoke to him and he gave me $600. And, and that just blew my mind away. That a person from a different church, from a different community, he he was engaged of what God was working in his kingdom. He knew that I was a need. He knew that I I had a need. And he talked to that person to bless me. And that for that day, I was like, wow, that is something amazing. That God speak to people. And God wants to speak to you. It's not just about money. He wants to speak to you in every area of your life. Because his main goal of God is that you and I, we become rulers, administrators of what he's given us. And that act of this dude, he did to me when I read this passage, and when he said, you know, be blessed, be fruitful. That dude understood that all the time that he's spending his job, you know, doing, I don't know, he was an engineer or something like that, that that doesn't belong to him, that, that that money that he had belongs to the kingdom. And didn't, he didn't say anything, he just... God said this, and I obey him. And I don't want to keep a penny in my pocket. God said everything, I give everything. And okay, man, God, why you didn't talk about the, the debit card with him? 
will be so nice that he emptied his bank account for me. But no, it doesn't happen. Uh, I just want you guys in this first point of, of the sermon that we are a special people from God. You and I were special people from God. And he gave us a task. is to rule. And the best way to rule is to learn how to listen to God. If we don't learn how to listen to God, we're going to have trouble and we're going to fail and fail and fail and fail. But when we listen to God, we engage of his big plan of ruling. We're going to see something, a huge difference in our lives. Let's, we're going to jump, jump to chapter, uh, Genesis chapter 3. And we're going to see what happened when we open our ears, not to God. But when, when we get seduced by our other messages, that what really, really pretend is to damage the capacity that we have to rule. And that's what happened in chapter Genesis chapter 3. Now, the serpent was more crafty than any of the wild animals the Lord God had made. He said to the woman, Did God really say, You must not eat from any tree in the garden? Did God really say you must not eat from any tree in the garden? The woman said to the serpent, We may eat fruit from the trees in the garden, but God did say you must not eat the fruit from the tree that is in the middle of the garden, and you must not touch it or, will, or you will die. The serpent replied, you will not certain, certainly die. The serpent said to the woman, for God knows that when you eat from it, your eyes will be open and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. When the woman saw that the fruit of the tree was good for food and pleasant to the eye, and also desirable for gaining wisdom, she took some and ate it. She also gave some to her husband, who was with her, and he ate it. Then the eyes of both of them were open, and they realized that they were naked. So they sew, how do you say that word? Sew. They sew fig leaves together and made covering for themselves. Then the man and his wife heard the sound of God. They heard the sound of God, the Lord God. As he was walking in the garden in the cool of the day, and they hide, they hid from the Lord God, God among the trees of the garden. God, we, we're designed to hear God's voice. But sometimes we are targeted to hear other voices too. And heard those voices that are not God's voices. There is no God's voice. Always is going to end in hurting us. It's always is going to end 
and it's going to hurt our capacity to rule. We can see in this case that they, they understand what God said. But for something weird, the serpents start, start talking to them and they, they start hearing that other voice. That other voice was seducing them. That was the serpent seducing them. And when they heard the, the voice of the snake, the capacity of ruling was distorted. He heard the Son of God. This is so, this caught my attention. Like, they heard God walking. You know, like when my son heard Stacy, he said, Oh, that's Stacy. That, uh, 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 that she's do, that, uh, that's Nor. Oh, that's Stacy. I know, I know that she, like, he, he heard, he, oh, I, I am who's not at home. <laughs> Unless sometimes she's really, really uh, uh, tired. But, you know, they, they under, they hear God noises. And he said, man, I know that noise. And I know that noise is God. But, you know, I, I was listening to the other voices And instead of running towards God, they start running away from God for listening other voices. Every time that we surrender ourselves to hear other voices, this is really typical in humankind. We're always trying to run away from God. You know, it's like we try and we know that we're doing, and we know that it's bad, but uh, this sin that lives in us, just make me do it. But uh, we know that it's not good. We know that we're stuck in that, in that um, not there. It's really hard when we start surrendering ourselves to listen to the world, but our main, uh, the way that we live our lives, is, you know, just listen to the culture. Or sometimes, listen to our flesh. What our flesh has to say. Or sometimes, listen to the devil. What the devil had to say. And when we listen, other voices that are no God, we're going to hurt ourselves. We're always going to hurt ourselves. Um, a few years ago, um, I just felt from God that um, I need to start paying more attention and, and the thing that he was giving me. And I, feel, I really felt in my heart that God was saying, Tito, put, the, put your things together. Put the, do, be a good administrator of the things that, that I've been giving you by grace. And, man, if there is one person that I've been receiving so many things by grace. It's me. It's me. God put me in a house with a hundred dollars in my pocket. You know, God blessed me with the most amazing wife. God allowed me to adopt the most amazing kids. That just it, sometimes I feel like a, there's the Holy Spirit talking, realizing me, or correcting me all the time, because that made me sometimes realize how how messed up I am. And how much I need from Jesus. And I've been receiving so many things by grace. The work that I do for a living, I see God just in, all the time, all the time. See, he's working amazing and working on, on, on my behalf and on behalf of other people. And, I'm, and I said, I feel so privileged of that. And see, there is one person that I've been receiving so many things by grace. It's me. And I think God, want, uh, I think, no, I knew that one day God told me, Tito, it's time to just to be more wise, Tito. And I started, okay, God, uh, we start working on this. And 
and I start putting my finances in order. And I create an emergency fund. And I get, uh, you know, this money for church. And I just put that money from there for church. And I have, and I have all these other things that, and I notice that, wow, I can be a good ruler. Wow, it's amazing when you get organized. Well, I didn't know that about me. Man, and I pay all my credit cards. And I say, I'm never going to have a credit card again. And I'm just going to pay cash. And I, you know, follow all the Dave Ramsey steps. And, and, I, and I saw the power to be organized. And then, uh, there was something in my heart. You know, those voices of your flesh. Putito. See how great you are, man? Huh. And this is just the beginning. You can be a millionaire. If you learn how to invest money. If you, oh, wow. And it start all these all this seducing thoughts start coming to my mind. Oh, wow. You, you can do so many things. And I start believing it. You know what? Yes. I can do that. Of course I can do that. And I see me and the potential that I have. To rule. And I said, you know what? I think God is not going to be mad with me if I take control of already giving him his portion. And I think he, if, if he give him his portion, he's going to be okay with me. And I'm going to take all this for me. Yeah. Because <laughs> 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 I'm fooling. I'm fooling. I'm following the rule, you know? And then, you know, I don't know if you have those seasons of life. When things start going the wrong way. When I have to take my daughter to, to take her tonsils. And it's the first time that I have to pay a deductible. And that deductible take a big part of my emergency fund. And that's not fun. That's, that's, that's horrible. You just like this. I just pass the car and boom, disappear. One. That's not fair. And then the roof of our house get damaged. Oh, we need to repair it before the, the insurance. They pass the time of the insurance and all those kind of things and Oh, you have to pay the deductible. What? And how much is the deductible? This amount. What? And what about my plants? What about my plants? And they, and it just, it's like this. Thousands of dollars going away in a blink of an eye. And then, My glasses, you know, I cannot see from far. If you see me one day driving without glasses, you said, just run. Because I cannot see from far. I need glasses to drive. You know? And my glasses, the lenses, uh, I've been having headaches and things like that. And, and I'm going to, to buy new glasses. And I say, okay, I want this, this frame and this and this and with the formula. How much is this? This amount of money. Are you crazy? This gold, what is in these glasses was, no, it's not fair. So you know what? He said, you know what? Use, use this frame and put the new lenses on it to reduce the price. Then I get into my car. And that was two days later. Grab my sunglasses that I need for drive. That, that we, they have the formula, the prescription. And I grab my sunglasses. And the, the leg of my sunglasses got broke. And I said to God, God, you better stop it. You better stop it. That's not fair. And you know what? My brain is going a while. Guys, it's all, I've been spending all this amount of money. I'm trying to be a good administrator. I'm trying to do all this. And look, all this is that is coming wrong. You are doing something wrong. 
And I started realizing, sure enough, that I, the, who was doing something wrong was me. That I put my trust in my capacity that is a fallen capacity that was completely disattached from God. And I put that God in a standby and said, you know, let me rule all this. And then, and then my brain goes on a while. Okay, without glasses, I cannot work. And those glasses take like two weeks or, or 10 days to, to come to you and say, okay, God, what? And I, I need that income because, you know, I'm short. And my brain is start going wild. And he put me in a position that I really, really have to understand. That he's the ruler and I want to be, he wants us to be like him to rule and that he create everything and he don't just create 10% for me, that everything belongs to him. It's not just a portion of you, it's everything. Everything belongs to him. Understand that is, is hard. And that I'm just, that I am just an administrator. Hey, Tito, you are just an administrator that doesn't belong to you. Even your life, you know who breathe, who, who breath, who blow into humankind was me. And you start putting all those things together. And I remember that day, I said, okay, God, can you please? And I, and I understand, understand, I don't know when you, you, you know yourself. And you know when your heart is in the wrong position with God. And the Holy Spirit go, bring that conviction to your heart. And I said to God, okay, God, um, surrender, please forgive me. Please forgive me. I, I got it. I got it. I got it, God. And I feel the invitation to to join him in his plan. And I was grabbing my sunglasses. Okay, God, give me the wisdom. I breathe. I breathe. And, and, and I say, okay, God, what, what do I need to do? And I start, this, this thought start coming to my mind. Oh, take it to the place that you bought it. Maybe they have warranty. Okay, going to Sam's to see if this guy glasses have warranty. Get to Sam's. Going to Sam's. Ask for the lady. Uh, Ma'am, I bought this glasses long time ago can you please um check if these glasses have warranty she checked no sir it expired like six months ago and the, the girl said her, her name is um kimberly kimberly told me hey tito um we have the same frame you just buy the frame and we switch the lenses and i said oh hallelujah hallelujah praise god yes so she, we, we're going to switch the lenses. So she grabbed the other glasses, grabbed my glasses. And when she was about to put the, the, the old lenses in the new glass, in the new frame, she broke my glasses, my, the lens of my glasses. And she said, Tito, I'm sorry. Uh, and she put the lens, the both lenses in that, a new frame. And she said, wear this. You can see with these glasses. Wear it. We're going to give you a free frame with a free, everything free, because what's my responsibility? I break that lens on you. And that was like, pow, pow, pow. and the other good thing that was for me, that was amazing to enter to God's plan. My niece is here. She was with me. She can testify. You can ask her. I was coming to, to with her and to, to stand with my two kids. And I was praying, God, please do a miracle. God, please, God, do a miracle. God, please do a miracle. God, Jesus, just revenge yourself. God, please do a miracle. God, please do a miracle. And then when that lady ha do that, and I was so in shock. He said, guys, remember how, what I was praying? Look, the miracle that, that you experienced. And I was so, so happy that God performed that miracle in front of my eyes. So I talked to Kimberly and said, Kimberly, there is anything that I can be praying for you. God used you today to to heal me, to, to, to bring provision to my life. And she said, you know, Tito, you, you can, I, I have a broken hip. And I, now I'm in such a horrible pain. Can you please pray for me? So I said, yes, Kimberly. So, so I just prayed, you know, regular prayer. God, thank you for Kimberly. Thank you for the blessing that you choose for my life. 
I just ask you that you put your healing hand on her. In the name of Jesus, amen. Kimberly, thank you very much. And I went with new and that it's gonna have a new glasses. And I have the, the old friend that was there with my old lenses, a little bit broken here, but I can wear it until I get the new glasses and I was set up. The next week when they call me to pick up my glasses, Kimberly was just wanted to look at, looking for me. I say, Tito, just come sit down, put your glasses, look. It looks amazing. Yes, yes, man, it was awesome. And at the end, when we're having the conversation, she said, Tito, I want to tell you something. I said, what happened, Kimberly? You know that day that you prayed for me? I said, yes. Well, that night when I got home and realized that I didn't have any pain. Okay, oh, what? Are you sure? Yeah, yes, I didn't realize that I didn't have any pain. And since then, I don't have a pain in my hips. And I was like, Kimberly, are you, t- are you serious? Because God never used me in that way before. So are you, are you serious, Kimberly? She said, yes. God, God healed me. And I said, by the way, yesterday I was in the pool with my, my, my grandkids. And, and I was so afraid that, you know, I do a false step and, you know, break my hips again or something. And I was so cautious. And my kids were, my grandkids were jumping from my legs. And I was so afraid of that that I'll probably get her again. And, and she, she said, but you know what? If God heal me, God heal me. And I have a blast with my grandkids last night. <laughs> and I was like, oh, that is amazing, Kimberly. You know, that, that taught me a, a big lesson, that God's plans are much bigger than my plans. And it's more that invitation to be a good administrator because sometimes we think that being a good administrator is just about money. You know? Being a good administrator is about everything. Yeah, let me, we live in America. We, we're so a spoiled country. You know? We, we just, when we go into other parts of the world and we see how people that probably have the same skill that you have. You know? With the same skill that becomes money. You know, your skills become money for you. When you go to other countries and you see people with the same skills and maybe better skills than you, and that does are tons in money, they live in need. You know, there's some many Christians in other parts of the world, in Venezuela, when they live in a horrible, in a horrible uh, uh, dictatorship, when people want to just put all the skills together, that, that doesn't translate in money. We're so blessed here in America that our skills in one way or the other, if we work hard and you organize, you can see the, the, the fruit of that. But what, what happened in other countries in South America? What happened when in other countries of Africa, Jesus doesn't exist over there? What happened over there? And sometimes we think as an American, Christian Americans, and because money is a huge factor here in America. That we're doing so good. Ah, oh, it's because Jesus. And that's, yeah, yeah, sometimes yes. But not all the time. Um, and what I was thinking and wrestled with that reality. The Holy Spirit just brought to me this um, a scripture from Paul. Paul um, was writing to, to the Philippians. And the Philippians sent him an offering, and he sent a, a guy, I forgot his name. He was in jail. Paul was in jail. Um, and he sent the, the church of the, the Philippians church, they sent him money and something to take care of, of, of Paul. And um, Paul wrote him a letter of the Philippians letter. Um, and he was so grateful for that. But one other thing that um, really just touched me about this. Uh, let's, let's read it together. It's going to be nice. He said, he said that Philippians 4, 6 to 7. Do not be anxious about anything. But in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, 
present your request to God. Oh my gosh. You know, like, like, you know, in every situation, pray, talk to God, learn how to, to hear his voice, his invitation, and the peace of God, which transcended all understanding, will guard your heart and your minds in Christ Jesus. In Christ Jesus. Philippians 4, 10 to 13, he said this. How I praise the Lord that you are concerned about me again. I know that you have always been concerned about uh, concerned for me, but you didn't have the chance to help me. Now that I was ever in need, for I have learned how to be content in whatever I have. And learn how to be content with whatever I have. Can you imagine if Adam and Eve have embraced this mentality and learning to be content that I have 40 billion trees and I have to learn to be content with those 40 billion trees and no, I don't have to eat with this one. I have to eat all this, but no, I learned how to be content what I have for what I have. I learned how to be content with what I have. I know how to live in almost nothing or with everything and learn the secret of living in every situation. And learn the secret to live in every situation. Whether it's with a full stomach or empty. With plenty or little. For I can do everything through Christ who gives me the strength. Because I learned that. That with Jesus Christ. It doesn't matter the situation of this country. We learn that with Jesus Christ, we can do everything because he is strengthening us. You know what? And I know there's a lot of Christians in Africa and in South America and in Venezuela. And they're having a bad situation. And they have to learn to do this too. That they have little but they know that they, they put their faith in Jesus. They can do everything. Us too. We have to learn that when we have Jesus in our hearts, we can do everything. We can learn how to live with a little or plenty. Because we depend from the guy who had the blueprints of everything. So, if we want to be extraordinary rulers of this world and administrators of this world, we have to surrender our life to Jesus. It's not a shortcut, it's just one cut. His name is Jesus Christ. And the only way that you can hear the voice of Jesus is when you invite the Holy Spirit to be the Lord of your life. Because the, the, the duty of the Holy Spirit is bring Jesus alive in you. And we need Jesus to be good administrators. You want to you know what is a divine desire? You want to know what is a divine desire? When a baby, oh, when Gabe, run to Ashley, and he knows mama. That, I know that voice. He don't want to be with me. He wants to run to mama. Because when she embraces him, he feels, he feels comfortable. 
He feels safe. And I pray that we have that divine desire. That divine desire that we need to run to Jesus every single day. That we need to listen to the Holy Spirit every single day. Like a baby run to his mother. That a baby that understands that they have to be attached to his parents. That's what God wants us to be. We want to be good rulers. We want to be a good administrators. Surrender to Jesus. And learn that through Jesus, we can do everything. Everything. Live with small. Live with plenty. It doesn't matter how the circumstances brought us. If we have Jesus, we have everything. I invite you to stand up and... Um, I'm going to invite the worship team to, to come to the front. And um, I just want to be honest with you. I don't know why I'm preaching this sermon. I'm suffering from anxiety. I don't know why God's just brought the wrong person to preach that. Um, I always scared all the time about situations in my life. All the time. All the, and my wife is... It's a witness of that. Um, I struggle with that. If it is someone who struggles, who sometimes listens to the voices that they don't have to listen, man, it's me, Tito. It's me, Tito. And I just, just give thank God to, to speak to me through me and through his presence. Um, if you are like me, one of the people that sometimes struggle to listen to other voices. Um, I want to pray for you. And, and I need prayer. And I need prayer. Uh, God wants to bring his image back to this world. And he's going to bring us with us. With his church. If you are that person, I just invite you that you close your eyes. And let's pray for one another. Holy Spirit, you know the deepest part of my heart. You know that I'm struggled a lot, God. I can't, I can't fake my brothers here. But I can fake you, God. Uh, you know me, really, God, that, that sometimes I'm a struggle. That sometimes I, I listen to my flesh more than I'm supposed to listen to you. And uh, I just ask you, God, that I need your help. Um, God, you've been proving to me over and over and over and over and over how wonderful you are, how much you love me, how much you take care of me. But here, here and there, sometimes God, uh, I listen to the wrong voices. Help us not to run away from you, to, you know, to run store you. That when we facing that difficult situation, God, we just run towards you, not run away from you. Father, I just ask you that do not allow any shame to set us apart from you, God. Father, in the name of Jesus, Holy Spirit, make Jesus alive, more alive than ever in our life. That can people around us can see the image of the, of the main ruler. The main, they can, they can calm the storms. The, male, the, the, the person who come um, heal the, the, the person who's sick. God. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen.